Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Benitez, coming to you from beautiful Los Angeles, California. And I'm super excited. Today's going to be a great episode. It is going to be a bit, um, how should I put it? A bit maybe uncomfortable, maybe challenging, maybe a bit offensive. Who knows? It depends on everyone's heart. But hey, if the shoe fits, then wear it. If it's, it's like Cinderella. If it fits, then go ahead and wear it. If the Lord is speaking to you, then receive it. Bless God. But no, seriously, I am very excited. Um, I've been meditating on this for quite some time. And to be honest with you, I was trying to, by grace, of course, I was trying to deliver this message in the previous episode. But to be honest with you, I do not know what happened. I, I was literally, I had some notes down, which if you know me, you know, I don't really work that that way. But I had some notes down. I was very, um, you know, determined to deliver this message. But for whatever reason, um, I just obey the spirit of God. The spirit of God is spontaneous. We must flow. This is how to walk in the spirit is it's, it's a lot like uh, dancing or, or dancing the tango. You have one person leading the dance uh, thing. I'm obviously not a dancer, but hear my point. You have one person leading the dance, and if the partner is not flowing with the person who is leading the dance, it's a it's a complete mess. It's a catastrophe. So when you dance, when you dance the tango, whatever it is, you have one person leading it, and in order for it to be successful and to flow, the other person must submit to the partner who is leading the dance thing, and then it becomes gracious and beautiful and eloquent and refined. In the same exact way, Jesus talked about the yoke of grace. Is there such a thing as a yoke of grace? Sure there is. Jesus talked about it in the Gospels where he said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he was speaking to those who were burdened, not because they were working too hard in the uh, machinery warehouses. No, he was speaking to those who were burdened under the constant demand of the law. So he said, hey, are you burdened? Are you uh, wary? Then take my yoke upon you for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. So when you begin to recognize that we are meant to flow with the spirit of God, grace is spontaneous. Grace is not uh, contingent on rules, regulations. Grace is led from within not by external signs and wonders and, oh my gosh, I heard that song in the radio. That means it's meant to be. No, it's from within. Grace is a flow. Grace is a this a person. His name is Jesus, if you did not know. Grace is a flow. It's, it, it's spontaneous. It's not regulated into this little box, rules and regulations. That, that is called, what Jesus calls it, religion. Selah. So, I'm not going to get into that, but I'm just giving you some nuggets for those who, who are who are listening to us, maybe for the first time, maybe for the third time. We are grabbing a lot of new viewers and listeners. There's actually a lot of people um, that are watching on YouTube, though there's no sort of like a video per se. There's just the beautiful artwork that Drea created. But we have people in, in, in on YouTube, we have people in Europe, we have people in Asia, we have people in Central America, Central uh, South America, um, in many different continents. Actually, even in um, the Middle East, that was actually one of our first countries we uh, broke into was Persia and the Persian Gulf. So this is an amazing time and the Spirit of God is flowing is flowing in this uh, in this platform and many other platforms. I'm not the only one. This is not a cult, so just call your jets. But I can tell you of a truth because I, there's testimonies and there is fruit to this platform. For the little to no marketing, I should say, let me correct myself. For the no marketing that we do, there is fruit to people's testimonies. To fruit from people's testimonies, people who are listening, and um, one great testimony is uh, I believe 
uh, and I don't know if I should mention his name or not, so I'm just going to keep it vague, but there was someone who's close to me who um, was telling me that someone in their family has been listening, and they have learned, he was telling me, this is out of his mouth, that he has learned more in this platform, which he has been listening to for about a month and a half, than he has learned from his church for the past three, four years, since he, well, I guess he grew up in the church. Somewhere in the Northeast, if you you know who I you know who you are, and I'm speaking to you, and I appreciate and I love you, man. So, um, and this is all by the glory and the grace of Jesus. Is that on this platform, the Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is 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 confirming what I am saying through the Holy Spirit in you. People are getting to know the person of Jesus. People are being liberated. I had a a, a friend of mine who we used to work together. He was on my team. What's up, man? Hopefully uh, you're listening to me today. And uh, for whatever reason, the Lord yoked us up. And I knew it from the beginning, and I know that you know it. So we we were, you know, training together, doing some sales stuff together. And then I just began, I don't know how it happened, obviously, by the Lord. We just began to talk about our testimonies. You know, before the Lord saved me, there was a lot of um, addictions and, and, and fear and anxiety and torment in my mind that the Lord has saved me from. So I began to relate to people on that, and that takes humility. And he opened up, I opened up, a year and a half later, he's in a whole different state, listening to one of the episodes and texting me, man, this is, he's like, I I'm halfway through, and this is powerful. I remember we were walking one-on-one -on -one in the beautiful uh, streets, I believe in Calabasas, in California, we were walking him and I, and we were just talking about what the Lord has done through his cross, specifically about the mind, about the, about the, the thorns, which is a, a type of the curse, the sweat, because he took the anxiety of, he took my anxiety, he took your anxiety, because anxiety is fear, fear is a sin, so if the Lord Jesus felt anxiety or fear, that means he sinned, but newsflash, Jesus never sinned, so what happened in that garden of Gethsemane, when the Lord Jesus began to sweat drops of blood because of the fear and the grief that came upon him, it wasn't his fear. It wasn't his anxiety. That would make him a sinner, but he is not. He is sinless. So what happened during that garden is that he took, at that moment, was the beginning of his passion. He took my anxiety, your anxiety, and as such, began to sweat drops of blood because at a specific peak of anxiety, you will begin to sweat and sweat drops of blood. Even many medical doctors and professionals have confirmed this. So we begin to talk about this. And he, he, he was just like, man, I never have heard this. And maybe he can jump on... I don't know how we're going to do it, but maybe in the future, many, many, there's so many testimonies. I don't know where to begin. And it's all by the grace of God. And my, my friend, he was taught, he, uh, he grew up in a, I believe it was, um, not Jehovah witness. Maybe it was Jehovah, maybe old oh, Mormon. So he, he, he said, man, I've never heard this before, though I've heard the Bible. And he had a lot of Bible knowledge, but he said, I never heard about this before. And that is my endeavor on the on these platforms is to unveil to you not how cool and handsome I am, though I may be. No, my endeavor is to put you at a complete awe of the beauty of Jesus and his finished work. Because truly, our only hope is found in Christ. Our only hope as believers, the only hope for the world is not to save the planet, is to save humanity, and that by the cross. So on this platform, we don't glorify a denomination of religion. You know, if you tell someone you're Christian, automatically, what denomination? Who cares? I'm all about the finished work of the cross of Christ. Jesus is the person who receives all the glory, all the honor on this platform. And as such, when people when their mind, when their eye of the soul begins to be enlightened with the finished work of the cross, there is liberty, there is peace, there is complete wholeness and restoration by the cross of Christ. That is what Paul said, I determined to know nothing. And he knew a lot. But Paul, by the Spirit, said, I determined to know nothing except Christ and Him crucified, specifically. 
not Christ as an example that we must work to attain to be. No, Christ and the finished work of his cross. So um, today I want to begin a brief, uh, I'm not going to call it a series because that just puts me under the law and I never finish a series. <laughs> but I am going to talk about good works because I believe that this is a specific area that many believers, many people who are sincerely interested in understanding about grace, who are sincerely have a sincere desire and love for the Lord, they do have this lurking question in their mind. And rightfully so. What about good works? And the biggest mistake we as ministers of the gospel of grace which is the only gospel, according to Galatians and Acts 20, 24. The biggest mistake we can make is to simply shun anyone and shun the topic of good works. Because if you did not know, Paul, who was called and known as the Apostle of Grace, spoke about good works more than James, more than Peter, and more than John. So my beginning my, my beginning point is this there is such a thing as good works however it'll be kind of foolish to put the caddy or the carriage before the horse the horse must go first and then the carriage follows so in the same exact manner there is such a thing of good works i am a big proponent of good works i said this to um to Declan the other day, and, and it was by the Spirit of God, I said, show me your understanding of grace by the fruit of holiness in your life. Show me you understand grace by the fruit of holiness in your life. Because I'll tell you, if there is no fruit to your life, and again, this all takes time. If you're just listening in the beginning, it, don't worry about it. it it's equated, in essence, to farming. If you plant a seed, the next day, are you going to go out and start to demand, what you know, where's this olive tree? I planted it yesterday. Where in the world is this olive tree? It'll be kind of silly. In the same exact way, it takes time. So let us be patient with one another. Let us be long-suffering with one another. Let us forbear each other's faults. Let us bear each other's infirmities. This is, this is, these are scriptures that I'm quoting to you, that Paul by the Spirit said. So let us be patient with one another. Let us be gracious and merciful to one another. Let us forgive each other because Christ has already forgiven us. Let us be patient with one another because Christ is so patient with me and with you. Let us be long-suffering with each other's faults because guess what? Christ is so long-suffering with me and with you. So there is such a thing as fruit, but in the same exact way, if I plant some uh, grapevines for a beautiful grape that I love called Tempranillo in Spain. It's a specific grape. How do I know? I like watching wine documentaries and I enjoy seeing how it's planted, how it's harvested, etc. So let's say I'm planting this, this grapevine. The grape is called Tempranillo or in American Tempranillo. If I'm planting this grape, and let's say a week goes by. This is a type of your new birth. Let's say you get born. Let's say the Lord saves you, right? You're born again. A week goes by. What if I go? What would you say if I go and start to look at the grapevine a week later after I planted those grapes? And being like, well, nothing has happened. I guess it's not real. I guess this grape seed that I have planted is not real because a week has passed and I don't see anything going on. What if you planted an olive tree seed? Let's say a year goes by and you go and you look at it and there's there's like, you know, very little to nothing and you start condemning it. Well, I guess it's not happening. You see, even with trees, it take first the roots go down underneath and we don't see that. Even with plants, correct me if I'm wrong to, to probably Kim because she knows a lot about plants and whatnot. But correct me if I'm wrong. But what if I plant a, a, 
apricot tree or I plant tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes. I plant something and obviously I didn't grow up with an architect architecture, agriculture background, so maybe I'm mistaken. But if I plant a seed, first of all, the roots will not go up, they will go down. Same thing goes with the tree. The tree roots will go down first and then up. So it's kind of foolish and um, presumptuous if we as believers and ministers be begin to demand fruit immediately from people's lives. So my, my, point, my point is this. It, 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 it's very silly and it's very foolish if we begin to demand fruit immediately. Fruit of holiness, because that's what the Bible talks about in Romans. That's that's the verbiage. Maybe you can find that scripture for me, Andrea. Is that in Romans, it talks about now you have your fruit unto holiness. I believe it's in Romans chapter 5. So holiness is equated to fruit and harvest, which is why I'm talking about farming and planting and grapes and, and plants. Maybe you're a little bit puzzled, but that's the reason why. Because the Bible in Romans chapter 5 talks about and equates holiness as a fruit, a harvest in essence. So if I begin to demand a harvest a week later after I've planted that seed, it, it'll be kind of foolish, kind of ignorant and presumptuous. So my point is this, before we get into the scriptures for today, is that there is a there is such a thing as good works. You cannot discard, you cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is such a thing as good works. There is such a thing as fruit of holiness. And I would beg to submit this unto you. If you do not see fruit or in harvest eventually in your in a person's life, Prince said it, Prince said it, so I am not out of line. But he himself said maybe they are not truly born again. Prince said this two weeks ago. And I've been talking about this in the group chat for months. Because I said, this person is not born again. Because I don't care if you wait a year. A year is a good amount of time. Heck, a couple months, there, there should be uh, some sort of change in the person's life. Not perfection, because I am not perfect. I will never be perfect. But there is, there should be a desire for the word. Something is wrong if, and, and then I'm going to read the scripture. Something is wrong if, a, if, I'm speaking naturally now, if a baby is born the baby is born, let's say you go to St. John's Hospital in Amsterdam or whatever it is. A baby is born. The baby, he, let's say he's a he's a boy. He comes out of the mother's womb and has no desire to drink breast milk from his mom. Maybe a day goes by, no desire. A week goes by, no desire. The Bible talks, all these things in the natural are written for our illustration to understand invisible realities so if someone is born again and there is no desire to drink milk which is the word of god something is wrong we're, we're not playing religion here we're here for true transformation and fruit now what is that scripture andrea what does it say it's uh, romans 6 22 romans 6 are you guys writing this down uh yeah let's do new kings Oh, God. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Yes, yeah, so the holiness is a fruit. Good works is a fruit, is my point. So when, when a lot of people, for instance, we were in, the pre, in a previous church who preached a lot about works and none about Jesus. So when I began to talk about grace, when the Lord has opened my eyes, people automatically were about good works. And if we begin to shun those inquisitive souls who are desiring true truths and don't have an answer about good works, and we just say, well, it's not about good works. It, it, it's We have to rightfully divide the Word of God. My wife and I were just talking about this earlier, literally before we went on this episode, how doctrine is so important. We're under grace, Drea, and a lot of times people are like, People, if you notice, and this this is probably from the devil, but people who begin to understand grace are the ones with the funkiest doctrine. They are so easily misguided to these weird doctrines. 
such as universalism, which is heresy, such as um, all these weird things. And, and, and it's like they begin to, uh, to talk. I, I, when I first began to um, lead my team here in Los Angeles, doctrine was something that I spoke with Ethan about a lot. Because I can tell, because the, the, the devil will take advantage of a thirsty and inquisitive soul and put a lot of, this is why YouTube is so, is such a trap. If you don't have parental guidance spiritually, because you are so thirsty for the truth, any book, any heretical teaching on YouTube will put you into captivity once again. That is why the Lord has put shepherds over souls. That's found in Hebrews, in Thessalonians, in Colossians. I think in every single epistle that the Apostle of Grace, Paul, wrote about, he talked about shepherds over souls. So doctrine is so important. And good works does exist. In fact, Paul talks about it a lot in every single one of his epistles. Today, as we close out, what's the time that I have, Dre? Because Dre is monitoring my... Okay, so for the last 10, 15 minutes, I, I'm going to make this one a, a short one as a midweek service. For the, for the next 10, 15 minutes, by the grace of God, I'm going to talk about good works and the priority of it and what, what is good works. What about holiness? What about fruit of holiness? What about good works, Anthony? All these things. These are great questions, and I appreciate it, and we're going to dive into them, specifically Colossians 1. Verse 9, if you want to take notes, and Colossians 1, verse 10. So do you recall how I told you that everything is in sequence? What does that mean? We're adults here, so I'm going to talk about, let's say, giving birth, right? If someone, let's say my wife and I, right, we just got married. Well, we've been married four years, but I'm speaking as a story, as an illustration. Let's say my wife and I just get married. And then I'm talking to her and say, I want three kids. I want three handsome looking, uh, Espanol looking kids. I want beautiful, uh, tan, one blanquito, one like tan, one like beautiful, handsome kids. Anthony, you're getting out of, out of, out of order here. I know. Sorry. So let's say I'm, I'm like telling my wife, I want kids. I want kids. We just got married. I want kids. I want kids. I want kids. And I'm like looking at her tummy. And I'm like, where is the kids? Where are the kids? Where is this fruit? Where is the fruit? I want kids. Where is the fruit? People will put me in a loony bin. Instead, if I do it the Lord's way, in essence, and my wife and I have intimacy, the fruit, because children, if you did not know, are called fruit. Did you, did you know that? Children are called fruit. And uh, sperm is called seed. Is that, a, a, a Pastor, are you I'm reading the Bible to you, my friend. The Bible says we are born by incorruptible seed. That word in, he in Hebrew or in Greek, I should say, because it's New Testament, is actually sperma. We are born, the Bible says in 1 Peter, by the sperma of God. We are of the stock of God. We're not natural beings anymore we're we're supernatural in the spirit in a fleshly vessel that needs to be redeemed so we're we're, we're of we're not i don't want to get into that so we're not of this world but we have this earthen vessel that gives us headache left and right so if i'm looking at my wife's tummy and i'm getting very upset at her I'm like, you know what? I, I'm just going to like walk away because there is no fruit. But there, but there hasn't been a seed deposited. There hasn't been intimacy. And if I'm expecting fruit, the, the children, to come without planting a seed, to come without giving it time, because even that, it takes nine months for a fruit or a child to come out. Imagine like we just have intimacy. I planted the seed and then I, and then the next morning I'm like, honey, let me look at your tummy. Where's the baby? It's kind of like weird, right? But even childbearing takes nine months 
for the fruit, the child, to be formed by the grace of God in a woman's tummy in their womb. So why am I saying this? Is this anatomy class? No, these are all illustrations, types, signs, wisdom. In the same exact way, the fruit of holiness comes with time. What a revelation. The fruit of holiness comes with time after the seed is deposited. The seed the, is, is the Word of God, in essence. So the more you listen to the Word of God, not out of dogmatic rule, the more you listen, the more you are fed, the more you are washed, the fruit should be there. In fact, Paul was a huge proponent of good works. He spoke about good works, like I mentioned, more than any other apostle, even more than James, who was a law preacher. Paul talked about good works, and he was a proponent of good works. However, this is where the doctrine comes in into play very, very keenly. We are not saved by good works. In fact, in Ephesians, it says, we are, it says by grace are you saved, because a lot of people who are religious love to quote this. So let's go to Ephesians chapter uh, 2, and then we'll go back to Colossians. This is kind of like a Bible teaching platform. Is that okay? We need to be fed the Word of God and not just yell that, and just kind of like cheered on. We need mature believers. You can't sit still, ask for grace, and listen. So the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has he made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and has already raised us up together and has already made us sit down together in heavenly places in Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. That's amazing. That That is what Billy Graham has on his tomb in North Carolina. That is beauty. That is salvation. That is grace, grace, grace. Now continue reading. For by grace are you saved. This is verse 8, Ephesians 2. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now listen to this. This, this is the same exact epistle, the verse right next to it, verse 10. This is full of grace, right? Now what does the next verse say? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has already ordained for you to walk in these good works. So you have good works that God has preordained before the foundation of the world for you to walk in these good works. These are ordained good works for you as a believer to walk into. But notice how Paul, by the Spirit of God, took the time for the revelation of grace first and then works comes after. This is very similar found in Colossians chapter 9. I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 is the revelation in the same exact way of grace. The revelation of spiritual understanding comes first. That's verse 9. Then in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, then the next verse after, after spiritual understanding and revelation of grace, then he talks about good works. So let's read it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. I'm giving you a bunch of Bible scholarly tips on here today. Colossians and Ephesians are, in essence, twin brothers. When you read Ephesians at the end of it, it's Ephesians or Colossians, but Paul by the Spirit said, I want you to read the, the epistle that is written to Laodicea, and for them to read this epistle. Laodicea is Ephesians. In the, it's the church is Ephesians. It was in the region of Laodicea. So Ephesians and Colossians are in essence twin brothers. That is why you will see and hear similar language when you read Colossians and Ephesians. In fact, for a new believer, I would say read Colossians. I told one of my good friends out in Utah, 
because he asked me, what should I start reading? I said, read Colossians. It's very short. It unveils the finished work of Jesus, and you will grow. You will grow. You will grow. You will grow. I began to read Ephesians when the Lord first saved me. You want to know why? Because I heard Kanye West said, say something about Ephesians. And I was like, huh, maybe I need to read Ephesians. And when I read Ephesians, I did not even read it properly. I read it. I, I, the Bible that I ordered was kind of funky. So I was reading broken sentences and I was like, I don't understand it. But be patient because the Lord will give you grace. So Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 says this, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. This is for the church, Paul speaking by the Spirit. And, and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul was such, had a heart of the Lord as shown in the scriptures, that his desire for all of his churches was for spiritual wisdom and understanding. So that's verse 9. And then after that, after he says, I, I have not stopped praying that you may be filled with light. You, you will find this in Ephesians chapter 1 as well. We're doing Bible teaching today. Is that okay? Are, are we good still? Okay. So then the next verse in Colossians chapter 1 verse 10. Then it says, after you have been filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful, that's why I've been talking about fruit, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Your life as a believer is not to be stagnant. You're in the same exact way if a person is uh, gugu gagging. At, I don't even know what that means, like being a baby, goo goo gaga, you know, as a two year old, that's cute. It's cute. If he is throwing uh, everything into his mouth to eat, Legos, you know, whatever it is, it's kind of dangerous, but whatever. Um, if he's just throwing whatever it is, just like a baby Christian, just eating anything up, bad doctrine, good doctrine, whatever. But if that, per if that believer turns 20 years old, heck, if that believer turns 10 years old, if he's 12 years old and if he's still speaking in gibberish, asking for his mother's breast to eat, we have a problem here. So we are not to stay stagnant in the same exact way we are to grow. In fact, Paul is a huge proponent of increasing in the knowledge of God, which is Jesus, increasing in every single good work. So I want to read this portion of this commentary. It's such a good commentary. Listen to this. The end of all knowledge, the Apostle Paul would say, is conduct. So in the same exact way, spiritual enlightenment comes first, good works comes later. So if we try to do good works without spiritual enlightenment of grace and Jesus, we will fall f flat on our face, as many believers do. But everything is has its sequence. The horse first, and then the carriage. The seed must be planted in my wife's womb, and then the fruit comes nine months later. The seed for the olive tree must be planted in the soil first, water, sun, and time, and then the fruit will come. The seed for the grapevine, for the termanillo grapes must be planted. Time, sun, and patience is required, and fruit will eventually come forth. But if I'm requiring fruit without planting the seed, if I'm requiring fruit without giving it time, if I'm demanding fruit too soon, a week later, it will wither up the plant, the tree, or whatever I am harvesting. In the same exact way, good works is a necessity not for salvation not even for blessing you can't pray for you can't pray your way into more blessing what do i mean by that many believers believe that the more i pray the more anointed i am but you but in essence we pray to receive what jesus has already accomplished for us we don't 
pray to work our flesh up. Many religious believers say, stir up, we're stirring ourselves up. Sounds like stirring up the flesh. There's a reason for it. We don't stir our flesh up to, you know, feel more powerful, feel more anointed. Great, I prayed all night. Now I deserve a blessing. That is religion. And that is frustrating the grace of God, according to Galatians chapter 3. We went through an all-night prayer, which I thought it was bananas. I was like, a, I was dropping out at 3 a.m. My wife was like, no, we need to stay. I'm like, why? Because you're a pastor at the church, Anthony. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then sure enough, 6 a.m. came by. And this is, this is a, I'm just speaking about a, a, a church in the past. Prince talks about his past experiences because the Lord has brought him through that for the edification of the church. So does Andrew Walmack, so does Creflo Dollar, many other men who preach grace. And as such, I cannot throw away the experience that the Lord has brought me through for the edification of the church. So at 6 a.m., after praying, they weren't even praying. They were just sleeping. Like, like It was nasty. It's like feet were out. People smelled. People had eye burgers. People were like, half. The pastor was like half asleep. 6 a.m. came by, and he, got, he grabbed the mic, and he said, Deuteronomy chapter 2 says, because you've done all these things, now I will bless you. Amen. So now we're blessed because we prayed 12 hours. Now everyone can go home. That's what, that's what he said. I'm not making this up. My point is you can't, you no amount of good works can ever attain to the blessing of God. I said this illustration before and I, and I will say it again as I try to wrap, wrap up. But if I go to a Yves Saint Laurent store, a YSL store, and I give them a dirty penny from the floor, which is a type of your righteousness, a type of my righteousness, my, my good works. If I give them a, a dirty penny and I want to buy this beautiful uh, calf, this leather, uh, leather bag, obviously this leather laptop bag. That's what I meant. If I give them, if I give the associate a dirty penny for a fifteen thousand dollar leather laptop bag, he will look at me very puzzled. That is how, and this is I'm speaking as a man because it, it's magnified times a bajillion. That is how our good works are. That is when we pray 12 hours, it's like, a, it's like a dirty little penny. Now, can I qualify for the blessing of A, B, and C? But we do not realize the price that must be paid for the blessing of God. And the good news is that you do not pay for the price to be blessed. Another person has paid. His name is Jesus. You do not pay for the anointing. Jesus is the anointed one. He kept the law. So now it's imputed to your account. You cannot do enough to be blessed. Now, with that being said, we don't do good works for salvation or for blessing, but it is a product. It is a fruit of the understanding that we have. No fruit to our life then that means we have little to no understanding about the grace of God. More understanding about grace, the more fruit should be shown in your life. Jesus said it this way, you shall know them by their what? You shall know them by their nice car. You shall know them by their good looks. You shall know them by their Gucci shoes. No, it, the Jesus is it okay to quote Jesus on this platform? Am I on CNN or something that it's kind of offensive to say the word Jesus? Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. We can be deceived by external acts. But fruit is an evident of what has occurred within. Someone can say they are born again, but there is little to no fruit. Then that is a fugazi, a mirage, an illusion. Fruit is, we are, we are called to be, uh, Walmack said it this way, we are called to be fruit examiners. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Who said that? James. This is in James. It's, it, <laughs> there's so much to it, but let me continue reading. So, spiritual enlightenment enables the Christian to walk, and this is a, a Hebraism adopted also into the biblical English, 
Spiritual enlightenment enables the Christian to walk in a way worthy of the Lord. So, this is ideal and the aim of the spiritual life throughout the Bible. The characteristics of this walk are set forth by the coordinate part particle praises standing in the half independent. Okay, now I'm getting too theological. My point is this, as I wrap up, that Paul was a huge proponent of good works. But good works is not needed for salvation, nor for blessing, nor for any fruit of salvation, which includes peace, which includes healing. Many people cannot receive their healing because they don't feel worthy. Newsflash, I don't care if you press reset on your life, have, have an abstinent life, go live in the mountains. People are born with sinful blood. You will never be worthy. Can I take that weight off of you? You and I will never be worthy ever. I don't care how much we pray, how much we, we will never be worthy to be healed. We will never be worthy to be blessed with wealth. We will never be worthy to be delivered from addictions. That is why Jesus came. That is why in Christ, in him, we are worthy. In ourselves, we are not. In Christ, we are the righteousness of God. In ourselves, Romans chapter 7, dwells no good thing. When we look to Christ and realize that he has kept the entire law of God, he's kept it. That is why he said, I did not come to destroy the law, but I've come to fulfill it. If I work at Amazon, I have an order to fulfill. It's head and shoulder shampoo. I grab the head and shoulder shampoo from the shelf. I put it in the cool little box. I put tape over it and I put fulfilled. It's sent away. What does that mean? That means that order has been completed. Okay, do you understand? So Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but he, he came to complete it. He kept it. He fulfilled it. And now that it's completed, it's done away with. Because we can never keep the law of God. We can never be holy enough to deserve healing. We can never be holy enough to deserve a blessing. We cannot pray. You can stay up for 40 days, 40 nights with your shoes off, very charismatic. You will never be holy enough, good enough in yourself to receive anything from God. Because God is perfectly holy. Anything outside of perfection is sin. We are born into a broken and corrupt world with sin in our natural blood. Romans, chap the Ro Romans chapter 4 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God is perfection. Anything short of perfection is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans chapter 11. So, understanding that, we finally surrender and recognize that our healing is not contingent. In other words, it does not hang on our good works. Our deliverance, our salvation, our blessing is never contingent on ourselves. Everything was contingent and is contingent on the Son of God and the perfection of Him. And He is sinless. He kept the law for you and for me. And now he has deposited the, the perfect obedience of keeping the law into your account. So now the pressure is off. Now we receive healing by grace. Now we receive prosperity by grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. So that you would become rich. Now we receive deliverance. By grace. Now we receive everything by grace. And once we receive it by grace, then we walk it out. And I want to end here. In Galatians, this is a beautiful, beautiful scripture. Maybe you can look it up for me. I believe it's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. The Bible says, Since, since we live in the Spirit, let us walk after the Spirit. In the same epistle that we're studying on today, in Colossians, Paul by the Spirit said, since we are resurrected with Christ, let us live a life worthy. In other words, set your mind on things above and not beneath. 
Since we're resurrected, let us live as resurrected beings. Since we're dead to sin, let us live as if we're dead to sin. Since we are purged and cleansed from every single sin, let us walk accordingly. Since we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Wh which one is it? Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Since we live in the Spirit, let us walk according to the Spirit. So it, 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 it will be a great error and it's, this is not what he said, so this is why I'm saying this. It would be a great error if Paul said, without any type of indication, if he will give you the imperative before the indication. What does that mean? If he will give you the command before the position. So he said, he gives you your position. He gives you your reality, which is we are in the Spirit. So he says, hey, since we live in the Spirit, let's walk after the Spirit. That's an action. Since we are resurrected with Christ, let us live as resurrected beings. Since we have been made kings, let us act as kings. Since we are dead to sin, Romans chapter 6, that's what that is all about. Since we are dead to sin, let us walk accordingly. Since we are dead to sickness and disease, let us walk accordingly. Since we are dead to poverty, let us walk accordingly. So he gives you the in, he gives you the uh, indication, the, the indicative, the position, your reality, the finished work, in other words. And then he gives you the action to follow. Since you are born again, since you are cleansed by the blood of Christ from all your sins, walk as someone who is dead to sin. Since you are someone who is not in the flesh but in the spirit, walk according to the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit... Notice how it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, humility, all these things. So this is our reality. Good works comes after understanding your position in Christ. Holiness comes as you have your eyes filled with light about the finished work of the cross of Christ. The more you see the finished work of the cross of Christ, the more fruit will manifest in your life. Because fruit is something that comes by abiding, not working. That is why the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so I said a lot right now, so I just kind of want you guys to chew on it. <laughs> But I, I kind of want to bring the plane down here and, and close out. Is that good works? I'm a huge proponent of good works. I told Declan this. I texted him. I didn't text the team because, it, you know, we're all on different spiritual maturities. But I, Declan is, is, is one of my best friends. I keep him very close to me. I said, I demand fruit from people's lives eventually. And he put like a, like a, like a surprise face. <gasps> And I said, show me you understand grace by the fruit of holiness in your life. And then his response was like, that sounds like what Jesus said, right? And I said, yeah. He said, you shall know them by their fruits. And Romans, whom Paul, the vessel, was speaking by the Spirit of Christ, said the fruit of holiness, the fruit of the Spirit. Since we live in the Spirit, let us walk after the Spirit. So I do demand, and that's a strong word, fruit eventually. But like I mentioned in the beginning, as a precursor, let us be patient. Let us be kind to one another. Let us be gracious and long-suffering, realizing that we are all at different maturities. That is biblical. That is found in First John. The Bible talks about children. The Bible talks about young men. Then the Bible talks about fathers. So these are different levels of maturity. The different... Okay, I need to... I, I'm not done. I just need to stop. I need to stop. But, uh, but seriously, I, I want you guys to continue to listen in. Continue to press in. I don't want to sound religious, but just but continue to press in and be paid. I want to give you this, this exhortation because a lot of you guys I know love the Lord and immediately are, are just like, okay, I need to go and run. Be patient with yourself. Be patient. Be patient and recognize the Lord is extremely 
supernaturally long-suffering with you. He does not condemn you. He doesn't shame you. He helps you. He lifts you up. He gives you more grace. He gives you more help. He continues to help you. He continues to deliver you. He continues to give you grace. Be patient. Be patient with yourself and realize that if God is not condemning you, who are you to condemn yourself? If Jesus is, does not condemn you but gives you grace, who are you to condemn your spouse and not give them grace? If Jesus doesn't hold your, sin, your sins against yourself, who are you to hold your own sins against yourself? Who are you to hold your brother's sins against them? Why point out the plank in someone's why point out the splinter in someone's eye when you have a plank hanging out of your own eye? Let us be gracious with one another. Let us be kind. Let us realize that Jesus is so patient, so full of grace, he will never condemn you for our mistakes. That is beautiful. So we have a desire for holiness here on this platform but we understand that it is only by grace in fact a prayer of mine that i'd encourage you to pray have you ever have you ever asked the lord for grace for holiness because there is no holiness in ourselves so if there is holiness to be shown in our lives it must come from him and by grace have you ever asked for have you ever asked for an abundance of grace for holiness you ever have a temper problem we can't defeat that You're, that's sin you can't deliver yourself from sin have you ever asked the lord for grace for that anger problem have you ever asked the lord for tremendous grace for that lust problem for that bitterness problem for that judgmental problem for that fear problem everything is by grace the fruit will come but we must understand that it is fruit and it is not work and we must understand that it is the Lord Jesus himself who produces the fruit. That is found in Romans. The Bible says that the fruit, it's actually in Philippians, the fruit of righteousness, which is by Jesus. So all the fruit of holiness, love, joy, peace, everything, I'm wrapping up, is actually by Jesus himself. That is in Philippians. The fruit of righteousness which is by Jesus Christ. So recognize who is the life giver and recognize that it is a fruit. And when you recognize that, you will begin to ask for more grace and begin to receive more grace. And you will see life transform before your very eyes. All of a sudden, you will be like, I don't know why my taste has changed. My team has witnessed this within myself. Because the, the, it needs to work through the leader first and then the sheep follow. You will say, well, I don't know. I just don't like watching this anymore. I used to like listening to, you know, A, B, and C. I just, I'm just, I'm just over it now. I don't know. I, I just can't. It kind of like makes my stomach turn. I used to like watching this movie. I thought it was funny. And now I, every time I watch it, it's like a cringe within me. That is called holiness and that by grace. So realize that Jesus is more than willing to impart his grace for holiness onto your life. And when you do that, man, your life will be transformed. So I want to say thank you. It's been an honor, a privilege. Continue. I will be on this topic probably for the next two episodes. So stay tuned. Keep your eye out and share this episode. Share it with one person. I will be more than happy to hear that you have shared it with one person. And I thank you in advance. Until the next one, I'll see you guys. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you're encouraged by it. If you believe in what we're doing and want to help us continue spreading the word about our gracious and loving Savior, consider supporting our podcast. Your contribution, whether it's a one-time gift or becoming a monthly partner, goes directly towards our media and our video production efforts. Together, we can continue to share the good news to those that need it the most. Visit our website to give today. And thank you for your generosity.